Let's build a multi-unit rental lot in every single world in The Sims 4. This is part four and we're building a bed and breakfast in Henford-on-Bagley. Here we are in the cozy town of Henford-on-Bagley. Now, as you can see, we are gonna be building on the kind of downtown-ish, like town square area, as opposed to the farmland out in the suburbs. I just figured for a bed and breakfast, it made the most sense to be in a higher traffic area. If you guys haven't seen episodes one to three, I'll link the playlist down below so you can catch up on all the episodes thus far. But a lot of you guys have been commenting that you wanted me to build a bed and breakfast. Most people thought Brindleton Bay would be perfect for that concept, which I totally agree with. But then I got this tweet from Hey Lizzie. This picture was definitely giving cozy cottage living bed and breakfast vibes, so I couldn't resist. I have to do it today. But as usual, please comment down below what world I should tackle next and also what type of multi-unit rental lot I should create. Also, I am doing my best to try and keep track of the ideas I like and the ideas that are really popular from previous videos comment sections. But sometimes I do end up gravitating towards the comments on my most recent video to decide what to do for my next video, if that makes sense. So if you did leave an idea or suggestion back in like episode one, it doesn't hurt to comment it again to like refresh my memory. But anyways, let's get started on our cottage living bed and breakfast. Today's video is sponsored by Factor 75. I'm predicting it right now. Getting a good meal kit delivery will be game changing for your productivity and ability to hit your goals in 2024. Factor 75 delivers chef prepared, fresh, ready to eat meals right to your door. And yes, I did say fresh, not frozen. I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of having the responsibility of feeding myself and coming up with a brand new meal plan and chopping all the vegetables every single week. With Factor, you can choose from a rotating weekly menu with 34 plus meal options and 36 plus add-ons like smoothies. They also offer vegan, vegetarian, keto, and calorie smart options to fit your lifestyle. The meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes or less, so you can get back to doing whatever it is you'd rather be doing. I know you all have a lot of goals you want to accomplish this year, and I want you all to save time and stress with Factor. So if you've been thinking about trying it, Factor is offering my subscribers free wellness shots for life. Scan the QR code or click the link in my description and use code POGDOCJAN50 for 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life using my link. That means you can choose two free wellness shots from the three available flavors with every order while you're an active subscriber. I'm so excited for you guys to try this. Thank you Factor for hooking us up. Okay, I'm kind of just noticing this now, but this lot is actually kind of like abnormally small. So this is definitely gonna be like a cozy cottage for sure. We also can't fully see the entire house from the inspo pic, so I'm gonna be freestyling a lot of it. One aspect that particularly caught my attention was the multiple levels of this home, and also the fact that it kind of looks like two separate structures, which I think is perfect for a bed and breakfast setup so that the owner can still have their own separate house. Okay, it's looking really silly right now, but trust me, I think this is correct. I'm going to add some roof pieces on to see if it will bring it together. And to make it match the cottage living aesthetic and the surrounding neighborhood a little bit better, I'm gonna go in with the cottage living thatched roof texture. For the door, I think this arched one from movie hangout stuff is actually perfect and looks so similar to the photo. I can't decide if we wanna go with some cute personality on the door or go with something more neutral. This brown swatch is kind of a happy medium. The base color is pretty neutral, but we still have some personal touches. Now for windows, I'm just going straight in and sorting by the cottage living pack. This pack has some really amazing windows. Just look at how large that catalog is. It's very hard to decide which windows. Honestly, I feel like we can't go wrong here. We can even put this tiny square one up on the roof corners here. Okay, I'm thinking we can probably fit another level under here and it will just get hidden by like the stairs and the landscaping. I'm gonna try that and see how it works out. Okay, it's time to work on the stairs now. So as you can see from the photo, it's kind of like an L-shaped staircase. So we have to make some sort of landing here and I'm gonna do that with a platform. I have my flat square placed here and I'm just gonna raise it up by maybe two or three like so. Now let's just grab these stone stairs from the base game and attach it to the platform right here. Now I'm taking a second staircase and attaching it to the platform to create that L shape. Now to create this kind of thick planty railing, I think I'm just going to use half walls. 
We'll fill the insides with some plants there, and then I'll also take the shortest half wall to line this section and fill that with plants as well. Let's extend this platform all the way to the end here, and then we'll fill the inside of there with plants. It also looks like there's some sort of shed in the corner there, so I'm gonna try and add that in as well. Honestly, I'm really happy. The structure is starting to come together so nicely. For the walls, we have to use one of these cottage living bricks. I'm gonna go in with this default creamy color. Now with the cottage living pack, these are the only three outdoor landscaping objects we got, so I think I have to use at least one of them, right? Why don't we stick this little bunny right here by the entrance? Is it kind of cute or kind of creepy? I don't really know. <laughs> it is still an absolute tragedy that we don't get the matching walkways to the world, but I think this one from Groin Together might be a semi-good match. Like it's definitely not perfect, but it's also not the worst thing ever. And then I'm just going in with some base game rocks to line the pathway. Okay, now I'm just gonna quickly add some generic landscaping, just some stuff that will match the existing environment, and then I'll be right back. 20 minutes later. Oh my gosh, okay, that took a little longer than I expected, but here is all of the landscaping all done. I mainly just used items from the base game and cottage living. These vines are very like whimsical looking and they're actually in the cottage living pack, which I thought were perfect. And then I also added these cracks from the vampires pack. I'm not exactly sure if the cracks are the vibe or not, but I figured a lot of the houses in Henford on Bagley are like more historical and older, so maybe the cracks do make sense. Let me know what you guys think of that down below, but before we move on to the interior, I did want to go in with a bunch of roof decor pieces. Seriously, the cottage living pack has some amazing exterior build assets. The doors, the windows, these roof pieces, the flooring, and the wall textures. Seriously, I think they were being really generous to us builders with this pack. So if you're someone who really loves building and also loves like a cottage core aesthetic, I think cottage living is a must buy for you. But these gabled roof decor pieces are so cute and honestly, I would never use them outside of the cottage living world, so I feel like I have to use them here. Maybe I'll do like the two bunnies looking at each other like that. I think that's super cute. Oh, actually, I also want to add a chimney too, so maybe I'll swap out some of these bunnies for two chimneys instead. Okay, that's it for our roof decor. I just have these two bunnies and then these two chimneys all from the cottage living pack. It also matches all of the houses in the neighborhood. For some reason, every single house here has two chimneys like on either side. Does anybody know the reason for that? Is that like a typical English countryside cottage feature or something. Okay, but one final, final thing that I want to add before we move on to the inside is I want to add some sort of community garden. We have a tiny sliver of grass back here, so I thought it would be nice to add some garden patches. I imagine the owner of this bed and breakfast grows their own food and serves it to their guests in the morning for breakfast. It's all fresh organic produce and just like the best quality stuff. Let's be honest here, homegrown is always the best. You simply cannot beat it. Okay, but I think that's gonna be it for the exterior. As usual, I'll probably go in and add some finishing touches later, but please leave me your honest feedback on what you think of this exterior. I am by no means an expert when it comes to cottage core or cottage exteriors. I'm more of a modern girly, as you guys know. I'm super proud of it and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Let's move on to the floor planning. Okay, here's the floor plan we're going with. So I decided to make the entire right side of this house for the owner. So on the downstairs here, this is where the owner's like living room and kitchen will be. And then up here, they're gonna have a loft style bedroom and a bathroom. I think traditionally for a bed and breakfast, the owner's kitchen would be shared with the guests. But in this case, I wanted the owner's unit to be completely separate because I think it might be more flexible for gameplay so you can have that landlord tenant relationship. Okay, onto the guest side of the bed and breakfast. So the entrance will be up here on the second floor and you're gonna walk into the communal kitchen and living room. This is where all the guests will gather in the morning to eat breakfast together. Moving upstairs, we have two small bedrooms and one bathroom. And then moving downstairs, we have two bedrooms and one bathroom as well. I think some rooms will have double beds and some will have single beds so that this bed and breakfast can accommodate a variety of different sims. But let me know what you guys think of this floor plan. I've personally never stayed at a bed and breakfast before. So if you have, let me know if this is semi-realistic. But from my research, it kind of felt like there were no hard and fast rules for how you want to set up a bed and breakfast. So I think this should do the trick, but let me know what you think and let's get on to furnishing. I definitely want to do the guest side first. And I think I'm going to start with the kitchen since that's a big feature of a bed and breakfast. And to be honest, it almost feels mandatory that I go in with the cottage living kitchen set. We were quite lucky to get so many kitchen objects in this pack. Like we basically got a full kitchen set, which you guys know I always look out for. I'm kind of into this green and
and yellow vibe. What do you guys think? And of course, we'll go in with this beautiful large farmhouse sink. That's like my dream sink right there. I'm just sorting by the cottage living pack to look for some clutter. And I came across this sign, which I think would be perfect for outside of our bed and breakfast. It has a little bunny on it and looks very friendly and welcoming. And we do kind of have a bunny theme going on in the exterior here. So maybe this should be called like the bunny bed and breakfast or something. What do you guys think this bed and breakfast should be called? I'm also gonna sort by the country kitchen kit because I think a lot of those items would work in this aesthetic and I do have kind of a small kit conspiracy theory because the country kitchen kit was released in very close proximity to the cottage living expansion pack and the pastel pop kit was released in very close proximity to the high school years expansion pack and also the basement treasures kit came out in close proximity to the growing together expansion pack and I don't know if it's just me or not but I'm seeing a lot of overlap in like the underlying theme of those kits and expansion pack duos that I mentioned like with the growing together expansion pack for example, the furniture style was kind of all over the place. They gave us some modern furniture, but they also gave us some older furniture, like generational furniture that has been passed down. Maybe furniture that you'd find in your basement? I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of a reach, but I feel like some of these lamps and like this antique mirror and some of these like trophies and stuff very well could have fit like the Growing Together storyline as well. This traveler's trunk too feels like it could be in the Growing Together expansion pack to be honest. But anyways, my theory is that that when they're planning out the expansion pack item list and drawing up all the concept art and all of the ideas and little themes and vignettes of different furniture pieces that they want to include. Sometimes not all of the objects make the cut either for budget reasons or they have to like limit the amount of items they're allowed to put in an expansion pack or something. So then instead of just tossing out these great ideas that somebody sketched up and researched, they just find a common theme amongst these items and then package them into a kit and then sell us the kit. <laughs> And that's overall my theory on how kits were born in general. And to be clear, I don't think it's a bad or shady idea. I think kits were born because they recognized all of these great ideas that were getting tossed in the trash and never coming to life. So they found a solution for it. But yeah, that is just my personal opinion and theory. It is not backed by any insider info whatsoever. The theory is more coming from a place like if I worked at EA in like creative operational efficiency, that's an idea that would make sense to me. I also don't think that theory applies to every single kit. For example, the decor to the max kit. I honestly think they just made that kit because they wanted to make that kit and it would never have fit into any other expansion pack or game pack. But anyways, thank you for listening to my theory. Let me know if you have any thoughts on it down below, but let's finish this kitchen, shall we? Okay, here's a cute idea. So I put this vase from Cottage Living, right? And then I'm gonna grab this base game utensil holder and I'm gonna click and drag it on top. It's a little too big, so I'm gonna size it down with my left square bracket key and then use the nine key to raise it up like that. And then we have a cute little Cottage Living utensil holder. I love that. Okay, here is the guest kitchen all cluttered up. Literally everything used in this scene right here is either from Cottage Living or the Country Kitchen Kit. I really like how it looks and I think the green and yellow is surprisingly really working here. So let's move on to the dining room. Now we do have to choose a slightly larger dining table because the whole point of the bed and breakfast is that everyone comes together in the morning and eats breakfast together. I very quickly changed the floor plan around because I think we can make this long dining table work if we put the kitchen on that corner instead. But I like like the rustic vibes of this cats and dogs dining table, now I might go in with these laundry day chairs. And then for rug, we'll use this woven one from Cats and Dogs. For the decor, we need to continue on with our bunny theme and put a bunny in the middle of the table like that. And then I guess we can also be normal and put some flowers as well. I'm a little bit unsure about the dining room colors. I feel like the table might be too dark. Would it be absolutely crazy to go with these bright green chairs to match the kitchen? Yeah, I mean, it does look cute, but it's a little bit too cartoony for my taste. Okay, let's just swap out the rug for this classic one from Laundry Day. I use this one all the time, so I know it's gonna work. Okay, I just added these two pictures from the cottage living pack and this large plant from the movie hangout stuff pack. Now there unfortunately isn't really space for a formal living room, but I do still wanna add a armchair or two in this corner. Let's go in with this very comfortable looking armchair from Cottage Living. That does look very nice in my opinion. And then maybe this basket of blankets as well so you can cozy up and read a book in this armchair. There's our cute little reading nook. Now, one last thing I do want to add and it's an item from the Growing Together expansion pack. It's this puzzle set. There's no formal living room, but that doesn't mean they can't come and hang out here and do puzzles and play board games together. I imagine after a long day of them exploring the town and the farms, they come back here, have some hot tea 
and do a puzzle together. I'm also gonna replace the plant that was here with this horse ranch fireplace. Look at how beautiful that fireplace is, you guys. Oh my gosh. This item wasn't available to me when I was building for the horse ranch pack, so I actually never got to see it until the pack got launched. But there you have it. Here is the communal area for the guest portion of the bed and breakfast. I will say everything looks a little bit random and kind of thrown together. Like there's a fireplace right next to a fridge, for example. But I think that randomness does fit the storyline of a bed and breakfast. Most of the time people are converting their existing house into a bed and breakfast. So you have to work with whatever floor plan you have and things don't always work out perfectly. But I hope you guys like it and kind of see the vision. Let's move downstairs and start working on some of the guest rooms. Okay, I want to do the larger room first because I want to include this double bed and obviously I'm going in with the one from Cottage Living. I want to make this as homey as possible, so I'm going to try my best not to reuse a single item throughout each of these rooms. Like this isn't a hotel, so it's not like every room will have the exact same end tables. I want this to feel like handmade and homey and curated, but honestly, who knows if I'll be able to pull that off. Maybe all of these rooms will end up looking the same. <laughs> these end tables are from the Horse Ranch Pack. Now for lamp. I think I might try and make this one from Outdoor Retreat work. It kind of has like a cozy vibe to it, you know? Also, I consider changing the wallpaper, but I think for these basement units, I'm gonna keep the brick. And then for the upstairs units, I'm gonna go in with some of this cottage living wallpaper. And we'll use this tiny living woven rug underneath the bed. For the dresser, I think this one from Get Together would be cute. And then also this full length mirror from the basement treasures kit. The lamps are no longer serving me, so I'm gonna choose something else instead. Maybe these fancy ones from the for rent pack. For overhead lighting, I wanna go in with this base game chandelier. It gives it more of a upscale expensive vibe. Okay, I know this isn't a hotel, but I was considering putting this like kind of old fashioned small TV on the dresser here so you can watch TV from bed. I don't know if that's like a typical thing to add in a bed and breakfast bedroom. So maybe since we don't have a TV in a living room for them to watch, it makes sense to put some in the bedrooms. I'm also gonna put some of these empty picture frames on the wall. I figured the owner might fill these frames with photos of the past guests and their experiences here. Now the final thing I must include is I wanna give every single room one of these baskets. It's gonna be a welcome gift basket that every single room receives with like a handwritten note, maybe some snacks and a map of the area. Just trying to highlight some of the more personal touches that you get at a bed and breakfast that you wouldn't get at a hotel. And here is our first guest bedroom all day done it's pretty simple but has all of the necessities and it definitely feels more homey than a traditional hotel room so let me know down below if you think i missed anything and let's move on to the next one okay for this room let's go with a single bed instead and i think i want to make this bedroom perfect for a traveling student and give this room a desk i'll try out this blue plaid swatch from the horse ranch pack and then this end table is from cottage living Let's use this worn down rug from the werewolves pack to add some character to this room. I think the yellow swatch might work a bit better with this particular rug. Now let's go in with a desk in this little nook here. This ornate desk from Get Together is really catching my attention. I love all of the built-in drawers. And then why not go with the matching chair from Get Together as well. I just cluttered up the desk with some base game essentials and this Discover University lamp. And that's our desk area all done, perfect for a student. And we still have some room in the corner here for a dresser. I think this cottage living dresser would be a good option because it is on the smaller side and comes with a mirror already. And I'm just adding our mandatory welcome basket to the top of the dresser here. I just added this picture collage from the For Rent expansion pack. I imagine a lot of the artwork was given to the owner from the guests who visit here from around the world. So they've slowly accumulated a lot of this stuff over time. And then I also included this base game coat rack and a backpack there to kind of signify that this is a student's room. It could also be like a traveler's backpack too. So you can really use your imagination but with that being said, here is our second guest bedroom all done. Very different from the first one. I really like the idea that every room in this bed and breakfast is suitable for a different type of sim traveler. Like this one is for a student. This one could either be for a couple or maybe someone who wants to pay a little bit more for some extra luxury in a big bed. But yeah, this is turning out pretty cute so far. So let's move on to the bathroom now. Okay, for this downstairs bathroom, you literally cannot stop me from using these four rent tiles again again in the bathroom. I'm pretty sure that ever since the for rent pack came out, I have not used a single other tile in the bathroom besides these ones. 
but it's also because we got three different tiles, but then within each tile, there's a multiple different swatches, so you literally could never run out. It will be a dark day when I grow sick and tired of these four rent floor tiles, okay? Since this bathroom is in the basement, I think it would be fun to go for an older looking toilet. Like maybe this basement is the last to get renovated, so it has some older appliances. Also going in with this cottage living bathtub, as I just said, the basement bathroom is the last to get renovated, so unfortunately there's no shower here yet. And then we'll also do this cottage living vanity sink on this side. It would be a really pretty touch to go in with this elegant mirror. I imagine this was vintage or thrifted or something. I just added a bunch of spare toilet paper from the bathroom clutter kit, and now I'm gonna finish off with this bath mat from the Nifty Knitting Pack. Oh, I want the bathtub to be a bit more vibey, so I'm gonna add these fairy lights from the Cottage Living Pack. I think this is such a pretty item. And here's our downstairs bathroom all done. I think it looks really pretty, and low-key, it looks like really luxurious and expensive, so I'm definitely not mad about that. Let me know what you think of this bottom floor right here, and let's move on to the upstairs rooms. Before we move on, I just want to show you what I did underneath the staircase here. I just stacked a bunch of these Dream Home Decorator cube shelves and filled it with some extra towels and toiletries, just anything that the guests might need during their stay. Now we can move all the way upstairs to the third floor and tour these last two bedrooms. Both bedrooms are the exact same size, but they do accommodate two completely different types of travelers. So this one has a bunk bed. I thought it would be perfect for two friends that are traveling together or maybe even a couple that is on a budget. This bunk bed here is from the Horse Ranch Pack and this dresser is from Cats and Dogs. I went with a lot of mismatched woods and earthy tones in this bedroom. I also made sure to give them a desk in case they are students and need to get some work done. The desk is from the Horse Ranch pack, so the wood tone does match the bunk beds, and then the chair is from the Cats and Dogs pack, so the wood here matches the wood in the dresser. So even though I did mismatch woods, I made sure to repeat them throughout the room so it still looks cohesive. But let me know what you guys think of this budget-friendly best friends travelers room. Moving on to our final guest bedroom, I wanted to make sure I included one more bedroom that had a double bed and this bed is from the cats and dogs pack you can see we're kind of going for an earthy green color scheme in this room and because the bed kind of takes up a lot of space there isn't a ton of room for any other large furniture pieces i just put this horse ranch clothing rack here to act as our dresser and then on this side i have this small base game tv mounted on this shelf but overall this room has all of the necessities and i really love how cozy it feels so let me know what you think down below and lastly on the third floor we have our bathroom i use the same for rent tile as the downstairs bathroom, I just used this warm tone swatch instead. I still wanted to go for that more rustic yet polished vibe, so I kept the brick walls and went for these cats and dogs fixtures with the Seasons Farmhouse Shower. I really love how this brassy metal color doesn't match this coppery metal color here. I think it just adds to the warmth of this room and kind of gives it a semi-eclectic vibe. But that is all for the guest house portion of the bed and breakfast. Now it's time to move on to the owner's suite. Okay, for the owner's portion, we just go through the front door, which is on ground level, and we are met with the kitchen and living room. I wanted this area to feel cozy, but also open concept at the same time. So I made sure to use a lot of natural wood tones and items from the cottage living pack, horse ranch pack, cats and dogs pack, even the outdoor retreat pack. And then for the kitchen here, I used the country kitchen kit. The contrast of the black and green here is one of my favorite combinations ever. It has that rustic feel, but also low key looks kind of luxurious at the same time, which I think is kind of fitting considering this is the owner's suite. For the living room, I paired these plain white cats and dogs couches with this ornate horse ranch fireplace, the same one I used in the guest house. I thought the black and gold here tied in really nicely with the kitchen counters. Also, by the way, this clock is from the cottage living pack. I love it so much. I knew I had to include it in this build some way or another. Swinging around to the stairs here, I wanted this area to look really cluttered and messy. I figured as the owner of the bed and breakfast, you're gonna wanna have a lot of extra supplies on hand. Extra toiletries and towels and documents, even some spare art pieces pieces that you've collected that you haven't put up yet. So yeah, I just thought this was kind of a realistic addition to this space. I think most of these items are from the basement clutter kit, and I also never really know what to do with the space underneath the stairs, so I thought this was perfect, but let's move on to the upstairs now. Okay, up here is our owner's loft style bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. As you can see, I went for a cozy natural vibe with a lot of natural wood textures and also hints of this navy blue. These beautiful wood end tables are from the horse ranch pack. The bed is from Outdoor Retreat, and this navy disheveled rug is from the werewolves pack. 
I think this is like the perfect combination. All of these textures look so rustic, but then when you put it against these open windows and this creamy brick, it kind of elevates the space and makes it look a little bit more polished. Swinging around to this side, we just have a horse ranch mirror and this horse ranch bench. And then for wardrobe, I just use this trunk luggage set from the werewolves pack with a lot of clutter and boxes surrounding it. I thought the suitcases were fitting considering they're the owners of the bed and breakfast. I'm sure they've done a fair bit of traveling themselves. But moving on to the bathroom, it's a pretty similar bathroom layout to all of the other ones in this build. I just used the cats and dogs bathroom set. So I used a completely different color swatch here just so none of the bathrooms would look too matchy matchy or the same. In fact, you may notice, but I did make a very conscious effort to not repeat any items in this build. I'm fairly certain I succeeded at that. So let me know if you see any repeat items in this room, but I'm pretty sure I did a good job here. Well, you guys, that's gonna be it for our Henford on Bagley bed and breakfast. Like I said, I've never stayed at a bed and breakfast before, so I really hope that I got it right. You guys will have to let me know down below if I was missing any key features so I know for next time. But regardless of how accurate it is, I think that it turned out really cute and it's going to be really functional for gameplay as well. Most of the apartments I've built so far during this series haven't necessarily been catered towards like a landlord living on site. Technically your sim could own the entire apartment complex in Sulani or Oasis Springs or your sim could own the entire motel in Strangerville, but that's probably a bit less realistic as opposed to this bed and breakfast scenario. As usual, this build will be available on my gallery page. My ID is Dr. Underscore Ashley, and my other three episodes builds are already up there right now. I don't know how long I'm going to continue the series for, so if you guys enjoyed it and you want to see more episodes like this, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so I know to keep going. And don't forget to comment down below your suggestions for next week. I cannot wait to read your suggestions and get started on next week's episode. But thank you guys so much for watching, and as usual, I hope you all have a very, very, very above average day. Love you.